where does this can of Red Bull come from entirely? And I don't mean like which distribution center sent it to the Wawa. And I don't even mean where was it mixed in a vat and put into cans. No, I mean of the 13 or whatever ingredients are in this thing, where did each one of them start in the ground? And how far did they have to travel to get to my desk to provide the motivation to do this research in the first place? Like where did they pull the aluminum ore out of the side of a mountain to make this can? Well, I drank a Red Bull, dug deep into the research and found out. I will tell it to you now. Side note, I've got a little desktop forge here and we're gonna melt this can down into a little aluminum billet just so we can visualize exactly how much metal is in one of these. But first, what's in a Red Bull? Let's start with one of the biggest surprises I came across while uncovering this Red Bull origin story. The sort of citrus flavor that you taste when drinking an original flavored Red Bull, you know, like the hint of lemon lime, that's from the ingredient citric acid. In raw form, it looks a little bit like table salt. When they're sourcing citric acid commercially, it doesn't come from fruit like I might've thought. Lemons and lime for example are full of it, but that's not where they get it to make your Sprite Zero. It's also not just made in a lab either. Nope, the citric acid that's in this can and the stuff that's in most sour tasty beverages actually comes from mold. Also, it's not just some mold. Citric acid comes from a modified version of black mold, the scariest sounding mold of them all. Aspergillus, the kind of mold you don't want to see in your house behind your drywall when you're renovating your bathroom. They grow it in mass quantities using a type of molasses to feed and ferment the mold. As an added bonus, citric acid is also helpful in polishing stainless steel. More than 2 million tons of citric acid are manufactured every year, and that is really hard to visualize in terms of mold. Citric acid is made in a bunch of places. Pfizer even has a plant in New Jersey, but over 60% of it comes from China. I couldn't find anything saying where Red Bull gets there specifically, but there is a citric acid plant in Phoenix, Arizona, and Red Bull has a canning and distribution facility just 10 miles down the road in Glendale, Arizona. So we'll just make a giant assumption here and put those 10 miles on the list for that ingredient to make its way to the facility. Next, and we'll just go down the list from highest concentration in the drink to lowest for the rest of these, is carbonated water. Glendale, Arizona gets its water from the Salt, Verde, and Colorado rivers, which means that some portion of your delicious and energizing treat has traveled down the Grand Canyon before getting sucked into a hundred mile long pipe, then through a treatment plant and over to the canning facility to be infused with carbon dioxide for fizziness. That puts us up to 110 miles now. We can just forget about the fact that a lot of Earth's water probably came from ancient asteroids and comets that traveled untold distances through space and time to eventually become Red Bulls. Next up, sucrose. Sucrose is table sugar. These delicious white grains are not only what sweetens the drink, but sugar is practically pure energy for your body, as long as you use it. Also very handy, your body finds it quite easy to store sucrose for later use if you don't. Sucrose is made in mass quantities from either sugar cane or sugar beets. Fun fact, literally all green plants use the sun to produce sucrose for their energy. And you could theoretically extract sugar from all of them. You could literally cut your grass and make it into sugar. But sugar cane and sugar beets have the highest concentration by far. So that's what the world uses to produce it. And even though these two plants are completely different in every way, the end product, sugar, that comes from them will be totally identical. The two largest American producers of sugarcane are Florida and Louisiana. And for sugar beets, it's my home state of Minnesota. And it's just about the same distance from either of those places to Glendale, Arizona. So we'll just add 1,500 miles of travel to get that sweet, sweet energy dust into the Red Bull. I've got some sugar somewhere over here. It looks a little like table salt. Next up, glucose. And I didn't know we were gonna go this deep into bio biology and sugars, but here we go. Glucose is another sugar. This is the sugar our cells actually use for energy. Pretty much everything you eat that isn't a vitamin, mineral, fiber, or protein, and sometimes even protein, gets converted into glucose to run this biological mech suit we're all living in. When you hear the phrase blood sugar, it's referring to your blood glucose levels. So sucrose, table sugar, is actually one glucose molecule and one fructose molecule bonded together. When you eat it, the glucose goes straight to work while the fructose heads over to your liver to be processed and stored as body fat unless it's needed for more energy. In its pure form, glucose is usually produced as a syrup. They use a set of machines that look like this to perform these tasks to make it. From what I can glean from my research, the reason that they add glucose, even though they've already added sucrose, pure sugar, is that not only does glucose further sweeten the beverage and add a quickly available energy source, but it uniquely acts as a preservative as well, which means it'll push the shelf life further along in a can of Red Bull. 
It's like eight in the morning right now. I found a glucose production facility in San Diego, California, which is only 377 miles from the plant in Glendale, which adds 377 miles to the overall coalescence of a can of Red Bull. Taurine. Its chemical name, amino sulfonic acid, is a naturally occurring molecule in our bodies. It may be the namesake for the drink itself, since it comes from the Latin word taurus, which means bull. There are plenty of studies about the benefits of taurine, including lowering your blood pressure, aiding in fat loss for obese people, and even helping to retain visual function for diabetics. Link to the studies below. Also, maybe don't drink too much full strength Red Bull if you're diabetic. To produce taurine at the scale needed for a giant company, the process is downright strange if you ask me. Taurine is synthesized from the amino acid cysteine. Cysteine, just like taurine, is present in meat products, eggs, animal skin, places like that. But when used as an ingredient for mass production, its origin is poultry feathers. Isn't that interesting? They take poultry feathers, probably from a plant that makes chicken, do a bunch of stuff to it, put it in some beakers, and I'm just gonna read this next sentence and expect maybe 0.01% of you to understand what it means at all. Not including myself, produced by the hydrolysis of racemic 2 amino delta squared thiozoline 4 carboxylic acid using pseudomonas thiozinolophyllum. Got that? Then, through the Mitsonobu reaction, they make taurine. Easy peasy. Taurine as a raw additive is sort of like a white powder, a little bit like table salt. The largest producer by far is the United States Biological in Salem, Massachusetts, a whopping 2,600 miles from Glendale, Arizona. This brings us to sodium bicarbonate, more commonly known as baking soda. Apparently, those of you in Australia and Great Britain call this stuff bicarbonate of soda. You guys are funny. Who would have thought there'd be baking soda in Red Bull? Sodium bicarbonate is used in pyrotechnics. It's used as a disinfectant. It's in fire extinguishers. It can even spontaneously neutralize an acid spill. But I expect that the reason that it's in Red Bull is that it is also known to be a supplement that will improve muscular endurance during short-term, high-intensity exercise. The great origin story of sodium bicarbonate is as follows. Soda ash is mined from the ore called trona, then dissolved in water and treated with carbon dioxide. When all the smoke clears, you've got a white powder laying on the table. From a distance, it looks a little like table salt. There is a large trona mine in Searley's Lake, California. From there, it travels 850 miles to Picance Creek, Pacinx Creek Basin in Colorado to be processed, and then 650 more miles to Glendale. On to magnesium carbonate. This stuff is used to make bricks and fireproofing materials. I actually have some right here. It's also the white powder that you see gymnasts and rock climbers put on their hands for grip. It's the bright white coating on projector screens, and it's in Red Bull. It has a bunch of different uses in cooking, anti-caking, I prefer caking, <laughs> antacid, a laxative, but most likely Red Bull uses it as a stabilizer, basically keeping all these separate ingredients mixed up in the can. In its raw form, magnesium bicarbonate is a white powder. It could easily be mistaken for table salt. Next, and second only to sugar as my personal favorite ingredient, caffeine. Another interesting biology fact, caffeine probably doesn't work the way you think it does. A caffeine molecule is a very similar physical shape to an adenosine molecule. Adenosine is a molecule in your body that makes you feel tired, and it works by physically attaching itself to an adenosine receptor. Well, just because of their physical shape, caffeine molecules happen to fit into an adenosine receptor too, and they simply physically get in the way. That's how it works. So with less adenosine, you get less tired. It's so weird. It also promotes adrenaline production and generally acts as like a really weak cocaine. So there's that. But caffeine doesn't actually wake you up, it just prevents you from becoming tired which wakes you up. Importantly though, it also doesn't get rid of those sleepy adenosine molecules. So they'll kind of build up and eventually when all the caffeine molecules get out of the way, now you have even more adenosine molecules than you did before and you'll be more tired than you were before, hence the crash, hence more Red Bull. And man, is it tough to track down where we make it in mass quantities in the modern age, aside from coffee and tea, which is still made in a very not modern way. But I found it. You need to start with ammonia, which you get as a byproduct from the coking process of coal, which you get straight out of the ground. You combine this synthetic ammonia with carbon dioxide in some magical way, who cares, to get dimethyluria. Sure I'm saying that right. You get that stuff and combine it in a lab with malonic acid, which is a byproduct of turning biomass into fuel to make 
Caffeine. That's as intricate of a description as I could find. Pure caffeine is a white, odorless powder, similar in description to almost like a table salt. Wyoming mines the most coal, so let's put a star on the map, 913 miles. Oh my god, we've still got five more ingredients to go. Let's just do a speed round. Niacinamide. This is vitamin B3. Good for your skin. The way you get these vitamins in mass quantities is just insane. This one is produced by catalyzing nicotinonitrile with the enzyme nitrile hydratase, and that is produced by the amoxidation of 3-methylpyridine, which is produced industrially by the reaction of acrolein with ammonia. All roads lead to ammonia. And if we go back a thousand years ago, the only way to get ammonia was piss. Red Bull is largely piss. Delicious piss. No, it's not. Calcium pentathenate. This one starts as formaldehyde. And this is the sort of information people use when they want to deceive you and make things sound scary. Like when they put a plant in some water with some red dye and it kills the plant. And then someone will put that on a caption saying, well, what do you think this does to your cells? We use formaldehyde for embalming the dead. And now you want to put this stuff in your mouth? Anyway, formaldehyde is mostly in Earth's atmosphere. That's pretty interesting. It must really stink up there. We make it by mixing chemicals with methanol, another interstellar molecule found in star forming regions of space, but we get methanol by making it out of bauxite, the same ore that contains aluminum metal. They need that ore to make the aluminum to make this very can. This was once bauxite in the side of a mountain. Then some things happened, someone heated it up, did some other things to it, and stamped it out into this shape. Let's undo that last part and find out just how much aluminum is in one can, shall we? When you melt down an aluminum can, there's a bunch of other stuff in there too, like a plastic sort of coating on the inside to prevent the citric acid from corroding the aluminum. One Red Bull can. Next, we have pyridoxine, vitamin B6. This allows your body to make amino acids. I went six or seven patents deep trying to find out where this substance actually comes out of the ground and I have failed. Maybe someone else can figure it out and drop it in the comments. The clearest answer I got was this, and I don't feel like saying each one of these words here, so. There you go. That's where we get vitamin B6. And the final ingredient, other than natural flavors and colors, which are both the trade secret that only the colonel knows, is vitamin B12. Similar to B3 and B6, in its raw form, it's a white powder. A guy could mistake it for table salt. This is one of those vitamins that are essential to us, but can only be found in animal products. Vegans beware. Sometimes people get vitamin B12 shots, which are touted as almost a miracle cure, saying that they boost metabolism, improve brain health, prevent depression, promote healthy hair, nails, and skin. Vitamin B12 prevents macular degeneration, boosts energy levels. But then you look closer into each one of those claims and a lot of the studies are actually inconclusive. But what we do know is that if you're deficient, you get sick. So if you're vegan or if you're pregnant, I guess Red Bull is a very, very vitalizing tincture. Come one, come all. It's my snake oil salesman voice. Industrial production of vitamin B12 is achieved through the fermentation of a bacteria called Propion bacterium. It's also used to make cheese. There is a worldwide annual production of B12 dust of 77,000 pounds. There's a plant in Foundation Valley, California, 881 miles away. So looking at this map, this is where the American production of Red Bull is pulled from the earth and from the mouths and butts of molds and bacteria. Its parts had to travel over 7,800 miles to come together in Glendale, Arizona to be put together into cans and travel another 2,145 miles to get to my gas station. That's just shy of 10,000 miles of travel. It took dozens of people, hundreds of hours to bring together 12 piles of white dust and a jug of sticky glucose syrup. And all that work and all of that shipping things around the country and around the world comes to a grand total of a little over two bucks. And I couldn't be more grateful for modern industry. This is a fine example of the economies of scale. This is also the abrupt end to today's episode of the Space Design Warehouse. 